Okay, so let me see. All right, we are live. So I'm sorry for the uh, slight delay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this series of support of Ace Your Econs. My name is Jeffrey. I'm the Chief Educator of Ace Your Econs, Singapore Most Practice Driven JC Econ Institution Center. So support of Ace Your Econs is a community event we have established this year to support our A-level community to help them succeed even beyond A-levels. So in this fortnightly series, we have we'll be inviting experts to share tips on how to succeed in A-levels and identify career choices. Okay, so to parents and students watching this, please help to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can receive the latest update on upcoming interview. Please also help to share this live event with your friends, family, colleagues, so that they can benefit from the collective wisdom of our experts. And most importantly, don't, don't forget to say hi to myself and Dr. Cho for the next 60 minutes. Right, so today we have Dr. Cho Tiazha with us. So Dr. Cho, please say hi to everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. All right, so Dr. Cho is a specialist focusing in the field of uh, rheumatology from NUH. Dr. Cho will be sharing his career choice as a doctor, his day-to-day -day life as a practicing doctor, as well as three tips for current med school to succeed beyond uh, med school. So he's currently an uh, assistant professor with uh, NUS uh, YRL School of Medicine. So some of you may probably find him a little familiar for those who are actually studying in NUS. All right, so a fun fact that nobody knows about Dr. Cho. <laughs> hey, fun fact, would you like to share with everyone? Fun fact. Okay, Wait, uh, I'm not used to you calling me like that. Can you just call me Jia Cai? Okay. All right, okay. Yeah, we are long time uh, friends. <laughs> yeah, so, a bit awkward, a bit awkward. <laughs> all right, so uh, Jia Cai is, uh, is a diehard fan of Ayumi Hamasaki. So welcome, Jia Cai. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Uh, I, 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 I'm not really a diehard fan. La. I, I, I'm a fan. La. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, Thanks everyone who is joining. I hope I can help you all. If, if you have any questions, just fire away. And uh, yeah, um, Jeffrey has all the good intentions behind um, doing all these sessions. Yeah, and we hope that you'll benefit from it. Yeah. Okay, thanks very, uh, thank, thank you for your kind word, Doctor. I, I think I, I still address you as Dr. Cho. <laughs> I'm not very, I'm not very <laughs> used to it. Teacher uh, Teo, is it? <laughs> Ken, you can call me Mr. Teo. All right, so um, for all my viewers out there, okay, remember to say hi if you know any of, uh, if you know either of the both of us, so that we know that uh, you're there rooting for our cause and supporting us. Okay, and if you have any questions for us, okay, please, uh, drop us in a comment below. Please like and share this video, okay? And we will be moving on to the first agenda for the day. So, um, Dr. Cho, how do you actually got started with uh, medicine? Uh, I know that you were from, uh, you were previously in uh, many years back, right? <laughs> Was it VJC, right? So, do you aspire to be, to, to, to study medicine or be a doctor since then? Or, or no, way no, before uh... that? Uh, not, not, not really. I, I chose it quite, quite uh, last minute. Um, it's, uh, I think everybody goes through the same struggle after A levels, right? You wonder what you want to do, what you want to apply for uni. So I went through the same process and talk to people, think about options. And um, to me at the time, I wanted something dynamic, you know, I wanted something like on the go and exciting and not uh, test bound, not uh, 8 to 5 and uh, repetitive. La. So I thought I wanted to be either a teacher like you, teacher Theo, or like uh, 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 in medicine, la, doctor. La. Um, okay. So I, I, I thought about the two options for a while and I, I thought I would. Uh, and then I realized that actually if I do medicine, actually I have to teach. So it is actually um, embedded uh, in, oh. in the work of uh, a doctor, you know. Yeah, so I thought, okay, la, then do that la, because it, there's more options. Yeah. Wait, I didn't know that it is a, a requirement to teach. So it... As in, if you are in a, in a public sector like, like us in hospital, you have to law, more, more or less, yeah. Oh, so, so you, you, have you to open coach. your own clinic, la. You open your own okay. clinic. You go private, then that's a different matter. But if you're in a hospital, then you're attached to a university. More, more or less, you you have some duties uh, 
along along these lines. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, am I am I right to say that uh, me choosing the path of medicine also somehow got you started in uh, in in educating and paying forward for the the younger generation. Do you, do you expect mm-hmm. that, or, or or you didn't know that you have teaching teaching duties? I, I knew, I knew. Oh, okay, it is okay. actually part of the reason why I chose it at that time, la. At the time, I didn't know teaching is so painful, <laughs> but <laughs> I can stop. Okay, but, but, I can relate uh, to that. I can relate. I can relate. <laughs> but I thought, like, okay, uh, uh. It's quite dynamic, lah. Medicine can be quite dynamic, so uh, it appealed to me that the the option of being a teacher is also possible in in medicine. Yeah, they are medical educators, lah. Basically, yeah. I see. Hmm. Okay, so uh, thanks for sharing with us. For all the viewers out there, okay, uh, like I what I've mentioned, Doctor Cho is here to answer questions. Okay, anything that's pertaining to med. Okay, within his uh scope and boundaries, lah. Okay, so please drop us a comment if you have any questions. Okay, and uh please give us a thumbs up if you like what we are doing okay we really appreciate okay your kind support so um dr cho uh, a very big part of our community here okay they are actually uh a-level students okay uh many of my students okay, aspire to be a doctor the first thing i ask what do you want to do okay they will, i'll look at their com- uh, subject combination so long as they tell me that they study PCME, physics, chem, math, something like yeah. this, uh, I know, oh, okay, you more or less want to be there. <laughs> so, yeah. um, uh, and previously, you also have one of the other experts who have already shared some of the um, tips mm. to enroll into a math school. So, yeah. uh, is there any anything else that you would like to add on, okay, from your perspective? Uh, Okay, this is the part that I really want to tell everybody who wants to apply to medicine. Okay, you have to be very sure that you want to do this because uh, you are effectively choosing a career, not a university course, right? You're not, it's not the same as enrolling into uh, biochemistry or engineering or any other course, okay? Because once you do medicine, you are saying that, oh, you want to do this for your whole of your life, okay? For the rest, of 50 years until you die so um it's it's a heavy decision to take when you are 18 years old and it's something that you need to uh, uh consider la. okay so I, I find that the the concept of medicine and concept of being a doctor is very romanticized right like wow good about medicine i'm gonna be a doctor wow wow then it's it's a very like prestigious sort of thing i i don't think it's a necessarily good thing lah, but it's just, just the way the society is set up to be right but um you have to be sure why you want to do this okay and, and uh why it appeals to you if it's about prestige about you know money or about um uh, like it just sounds nice kind of thing then it's very easy to get this illusion or, or run into problems later on because uh these things don't last uh, yeah, it really has to appeal on you on a, on a, on a level that you can connect with it. Maybe you like uh, thinking about people. Maybe you like thinking about solutions to complex problems. Maybe you like a bit of research, a bit of teaching. These are all valid reasons. Or maybe you just like to have fun in, in that sort of thing. Sometimes I hear that like, people say, oh, I want to help people. Everything help people, you know, all career help people. Hello, yeah, right, oh, right, tell, right. Me a, tell me a job that does not help people. Right. There's no such job that doesn't help people, okay? All jobs help people in a way or another. <laughs> so wow. it's, unless you, you, your definition of help must be like that kind of help, that other kind of help is not help. Then, then you might ask why, why do you think of helping to be restricted to that, yeah? So I think you have to be clear about what is it about medicine and being a doctor that appeals to you. And the last thing is uh, not to pander to like, oh, my, my parents won or, 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 or um, it's just cool. Lah, or my friends also apply. Lah. Got it. Hey, so Dr. Cho, I'd like to ask, uh, um, is it common for, let's say, students to have remorse, you know, when they take on uh, medicine as a, as a career? And they want, or rather, they find that it, it is not a good fit. That this is not what they want to do. So what, oh, what there, are the, there, there are people. Yeah. What are the consequences of this? Uh? Okay, is there any like uh, alternate plan B for them to drop out 
and uh, can, uh, yeah. study other course yeah. or even after after medicine uh do you see them doing a career switch and doing something I think else there's a spectrum right there are those that are outright like halfway first year wow this is cannot i cannot take it bye bye then they go another course yes you can do that the not so the, the i find the, the problems are those that are a little bit here and there they are like yeah i like it but i don't like it a little bit here i might i might and mm. they are still finding themselves along with the journey and finding themselves in medicine finding themselves first then finding themselves in medicine these are two different things wow. graduate already then they they still don't really know la. then in that case you could still pursue a career in medicine but when you graduate in, in with a degree in mbbs or, or mmed uh not MMAT, mbbs or, or uh, uh what's the us equivalent uh uh sorry i just keep my mind no but worries, when you no graduate worries. you you have many different career paths la. okay there are those that go to be a physician there are those who go on to um, do a bit more research there are those who do more education there are do, those that do more administrative like hospital quality improvement systems workflow that kind of thing and then there are those who uh don't do clear like bedside medicine okay so in my, my small group of classmates there are three of us two two friends la, basically form a small group and then we rotate each to all the postings together right the other two guys one of them wanted to do ear nose throat ent then didn't work out and, and eventually did law so he's a lawyer he did another law degree after medicine and then he, wow wow he is now medical law yeah and like help people help the first to get sued lah. so wow. <laughs> that's, that's a west one road okay finish. then the other guy he did wanted to do neurosearch he wanted to do and Matt didn't quite decide and then in the end he, he did IT so he did a master's degree in IT and was uh, doing some along the side of doing medical applications la. and eventually he decided that's not for him right? and he also did law so in my four in my small group of three people I have two lawyers I'm the only clinician ah. so it is uh yeah you can you 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 can um diverge la, after that yeah but um hmm. yeah i think that's the yeah got it okay so in a nutshell it's to really think through la, before you, you you sign up for this course <laughs> don't yeah, sign up for not, the it's not great anatomy la. it's not very glam one yeah yeah okay. and then all the covid i find that all the covid you know like oh covid 19 wow heroes uh, COVID hero. yes la, i know there's a lot of sacrifice that the healthcare workers make and it is indeed true and it is a very terrible experience and um but when you are the you are the person that's inside uh, that you have to quarantine and separate yourself away from your family and all that it's not that glam and heroic anymore okay you're not thinking of it as like some altar sacrifice on the altar like wow, wow how high uh, or like very like yep. self-sacrificing you won't you just feel the pain uh. okay yep. so um the angle differs when you're inside yeah hey uh you thanks for stop. yeah uh, thanks for sharing uh for the viewers out there just in case uh actually dr cho volunteered uh, during the the pandemic period right okay for COVID. Don't lie, I didn't, I I didn't uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I all of us have to all of us have to share the load yeah so I see. It's, <laughs> yeah okay uh great thanks for sharing so uh for the viewers out there okay please uh help us give us a thumbs up on what you are seeing if you like what you are seeing uh remember to say hi uh for uh, for our uh saint john community for our Maris from our Maris community, <laughs> for whoever that's watching this, okay, remember to say hi to us so that we know that you're watching. <laughs> I believe there is, uh, I believe there is. Okay, drop us a comment, say hi, so that we know that you're there, you're rooting for us. And yes, okay, for my med students or my post, uh, pre, uh, my existing students who are pursuing med, any questions that you have for med? Oops, I think Dr. Cho's internet connection is not very strong. So sorry, give me a second. So we, oh yes, uh, Dr. Cho is back. 
Five no worries. Yeah. No worries. In, wrong internet, button. Yeah. internet issues, so it, it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So please, uh, please, please sound out. Let us know that you are there and rooting for our cause. We appreciate that a lot. Okay. So we are going to move on to the next segment. Okay. So the next segment is probably something that uh, my students mentioned before. You know, so they will ask their seniors. Okay. How is their learning experience like in um, a math school? Okay, what are the things to expect? Okay, so I believe that these are the, 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 the collective wisdoms that can be shared by their seniors. So um, we just keep it brief, keep it short. Are there any things that you would like to share okay, uh, about your specific learning experience in math school? And probably one takeaway for our ex-students who is pursuing medicine at the moment or any other medicine students who are watching right now? I guess it is... Um... A lot of uh, math school is based on your own initiative, right? It's self-directed learning. Nobody is going to breathe down your neck and tell you you have to do this or learn this. And a lot of the clucking, talking to patients is on your own time, like on time, on target, like army or that, you know, on time, on target, you, you just do it, okay? Um, there's a lot book, but um, in the end, you are the own, you're, you're your own custodian, la. you know, how your career pans out, how you think about medicine, what kind of doctor you, you end up to be, actually depends on yourself and um, how you, you move in this path. Um, unlike other causes where, you know, you have a very, very clear, like, oh, today you do this, this is your course, this is your module. Medicine is not like that, right? It is uh, self-directed. So you, you do have to take a bit of initiative and uh, put in the relevant work. And I feel that, okay, if there are medical students tuning in now, I always tell students that don't need to have so many tutorials la, and don't need to have so many lectures because it's, in the end, lectures and tutorials in, in medicine are only useful to a certain extent. You, you plateau at a certain level after that. Okay, it's really the contact with patients. La, and after a while, you can tell that you know, this student or this new 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 person, new doctor has got some experience with talking to patients or like completely nope or like just attend lecture and tutorial only and cannot communicate, cannot function at the bedside. Okay, so in the end, it is your contact time uh, and your uh, ability to, to deal with patients and talk to patients, assess them that matters, not how many tutorials and lectures that you go, how many textbooks you read. Yeah, so I find that Nowadays, the, perhaps sometimes the focus has shifted and next students are always about lecture, lecture, tutorial, tutorial, I want more tutorial, more tutorial, tutorial, pizza, tutorial, more tutorial, but no use, uh, I know it's, I know I wouldn't say it's no use, but that shouldn't be the focus. Yeah, and passing exams is also not the focus. And um, <laughs> because in the end, uh, it's really that, your- That's a very loud sigh, that's a very loud sigh. <laughs> I do hear that there are certain frustrations that uh, are behind the sigh. <laughs> Maybe you want, to, you, want, you want to share yeah. with this from the perspective. Uh, really, because, uh, because, because, <laughs> you know, because, because I know that, just how you mentioned, you are also coaching, uh, you're also taking on uh, coaching and uh, or coaching or yeah coaching duties right or educational teaching duties. La, a bit of teaching teaching, la, a bit teaching of, duties yeah. so maybe you want to mm. take on that perspective uh, and in what, what kind of qualities you see that uh, uh the math what kind of qualities you would like to see in your math students definitely uh earnestness yeah earnestness in dealing with patients um it may seem like it is obvious, right? You do medicine, like, of course, you're earnest. Actually, no, okay? It's not true. And uh, there are a lot of things that can corrupt that, okay? For example, um, your um, direction or your focus in terms of, okay, one thing to pass the exam or doing well for a certain test or thing, it becomes like your, your focus is wrong because these are basically channels to help you be a good doctor, not the end in itself, right? It's just you pass the exam so that you will be a good doctor. It's not that, oh, you pass the exam, oh, okay, good, you pass the exam. And uh, I find that the focus is very directed towards getting the MBBS, which really, okay, I can understand and empathize with that. But really, there are a lot of things that are in clinical medicine and bedside that are not covered in the exam. It will never be because medicine is so complex and so difficult to assess uh, that you can't assess everything uh, and uh, we, we just do the very broad things and broad strokes in, 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 in the final year exam right but 
really um that's why we always say that if you want to do medicine it's really about you have to connect with the job and ask yourself what, what you're doing and why you're doing this because if it becomes like oh you just want the prestige or you, you want a certain outcome or, or just just get a degree then um, you may lose focus easily right and um, yep. after you get a degree then after that then no more exam that's always okay you can take more exams after that but that's not the point lah. Mm. okay got it so to sum up what Dr. Cho has mentioned, okay, from the perspective of him going through the med school, is going is going to accumulate, uh, going to accumulate more hands on practice, uh, hands on session and being in touch on the ground with the patients is definitely better than you know uh, lecture and tutorial. Okay, and from his perspective as a uh, uh, <laughs> professor <laughs> or coach. Uh, <laughs> Every, yeah. Everybody is assistant professor, by the way. I mean, ah, it's, okay, it's right like right. no, no big deal. Yeah, yeah just yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. It's to, it's to I say, I say. the qualities of uh, the current med students to be, be more focused. All right, so uh, we have Joe who said hi, hi Joe. Uh, yes, uh, for those who are looking, uh, we have actually interviewed Joe earlier on. Okay, Joe is a university career, uh, career uh, course coach who helps to place students uh, to competitive courses, uh, including medicine. So some of the things he already covered for the uh, the pre A level side. Okay, so uh, please check out his interview. And hi, Joe. Thanks for supporting us. So for the rest, hey, who is watching? Uh, please say hi. <laughs> so that we do have quite a bit of viewers out there. Okay, but uh, yes, oh, <laughs> see, I can't see <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, it's on the top top left. Uh, top left, you can see the eye. Oh, you can oh, see the eyeball, okay. eyeball. Yeah, okay, and the oh, like. Yeah, so okay. <laughs> remember to support our cause. Say hi and give us a thumbs up. All right, so we'll be moving on to the next part. Okay, which is your life and then as an actual practitioner. So, uh, mm. the, the interesting question that I have, okay, that I think uh, that I always wanted to ask is, okay, what is the disjoint? Okay, that you have that that you taught. Okay, what a doctor should be <laughs> when you are mm. in uh, when you are in JC when you are mm. in med school, as compared to what you are doing right now. Okay, <laughs> yeah, there, there are two earlier phases, uh, and mm. because everyone at different point, okay, they have different life worldview. Mm. Okay, JC, what is your what, what what do you expect as an actual practitioner? Okay, in med school, what do you expect as a practitioner? <laughs> mm. yeah, and, yeah, so. You know, people think that, oh, you uh doctors so you see patients. La. Okay, so that is true, we do see patients, but you may be surprised that that forms only a fraction of your work and your time. Okay. Depending on what portfolio you take up after med school and uh your level of seniority or whatever, what path you choose, that proportion differ. There are pure clinicians who just see patients indeed, um, especially in certain specialties like family medicine. Uh, where the, the clinical load is high and, and the hours are really just uh, in the clinic, right? And there are those that do other tracks, like for example, if you, if you, if you um, do residency or in, in medicine or, or in, in surgery and um, eventually you, you, you become a senior resident, you become a consultant and then your proportion of time change, change with time now. As, as the junior doctor in the first five years or seven years, um, your time would be mainly channeled towards seeing patients. So the clinical proportion, I think, is about 80-90%. I think, and that's for a good reason, because you're accumulating experience and, and, and accumulating the load. Okay, but as you, uh, if let's say you exit in a specialty, you become a specialist in a restructured hospital, then that proportion changes. You may take on additional work, for example, like administrative work. Okay. Examples of administrative work would be running an audit, right? To see like how many patients who are discharged under this specialty gets readmitted in 24 hours and why do they get readmitted? Then you are looking at a structural issue, right? That is an administrative work. And that also requires a kind of a thinking and a kind of a processing and it takes time, like, a lot of energy and comb through all this, right? So that's not really dealing with patients, but they are also meaningful and important. Administrative work can also be like planning rosters, like let's say, okay, COVID-19, then who is going to mend the ward in the weekend and all that, lah, you know? And of course, you have admin personnel to help you, but usually doctors also participate in some of this, yeah. They are more mundane, lah, okay? So admin is one, then there's another component, which is research, which is uh, 
if you different people have different research proportion for me i do a little bit more but uh not not every person may want to do it or have to do it then research can be clinical can be bench some people go to the lab to do like basic science kind of research they play mice you know they dissect their <laughs> kidneys and then put under a microscope then find like which receptor which medicine works better and then publish it those are bench kind of research there's also a clinical kind of research like you run a cohort of patients i say oh i have 100 patients with cancer so how do they turn out five years later and then you you look at their records and then you summarize and then you do the statistical analysis and then you write the paper and publish it lah. so that's research okay then the third part is um education lah. like you have to teach lah. you 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 may have to take on the students and and at different levels and uh, bring them to the bedside see patients or give lecture or um, carry out tutorials so um, different people have different proportions of time allocated to each of these and um, it also depends on the specialty that you are doing if you are a surgeon you also depend on what kind of surgery you know so um, but the path is diverse lah. and and what I want to say is that it's, it's not true that uh, once you graduate, you spend all your time seeing patients. Uh, that there are other non-clinical work as well. Yeah. So okay, if you want to talk about life as actual practitioner, first five to seven years, you wake up at six plus. You reach the hospital by seven, and then you start to walk rounds. Okay, you round the patient. So you round uh, Round means see the patient, look at the labs, look at the X-ray, come up with a plan, decide what you want to do. Right? You want to discharge. You want to continue. You want to stand for something what do you want the patient to do today so then usually after that the registrar or consultant will come and work together with you and um, basically sort of like think through the plan or vet the plan and maybe come at a different angle reassess the patient then um, that whole process can take very long uh, depending on the specialty it can take up to several <laughs> hours because if a patient's like 30 patients one patient you take like 10 minutes that's already how many hours right so wow. Usually that goes on to about maybe 10 or 11 or even how fast or how long your this is. You can even go up to 12 uh, okay, or one. Then after that, the, for junior doctors, they do these changes. Uh, okay, Changes means you have to execute the plan that is decided by a walk round. Okay, If it's to say discharge a patient, you have to discharge. Uh, you have to do it, right? Put in the memo, put in the medicine, or let's say the plan is to write to refer to another specialty to call the other doctor like hey can you come and see this patient why do i need you to see the patient and so on or it could be update relatives right like call the son and say you know your mom is here what's happening and all that so these are changes like getting the work done okay then usually by then about three four you 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 do about three four o'clock then uh, it's time to exit exit round is basically a repetition of the morning except it's more truncated and more focused so you go through the changes where you maybe basically report back to the senior doctors like okay this is what happened we tried to do this and what hiccups what are the blood tests that return and then you have a second round of discussion uh, or troubleshooting okay and um, along the way in this long process you may get caught for patients who get into trouble right like after yep. you bye bye to them in the world round, then they all oh, they're bleeding or like they have fever they have like all sorts of things then you have to go back and go attend to them lah. so it's a it's a process that goes on so usually by then you end the day about six or oh, six thirty if you're very unlucky seven if you're a surgeon in ot it could be eight or nine usually not not so bad lah, but usually six plus finish and go home then the next day start weekends usually you have to work either one day or two days half a day and then uh, for junior doctors they go on call uh, depending on specialty and hospital usually about once a week um, either you stay for until like 11 p.m or some hospitals you stay overnight then you get compensated the next day you go back about 12 noon or, or 1 p.m instead of staying till 5 p.m okay that's called post call so um, that is the life of the junior doctor and usually after that you you decide on the specialty you go further training then um you drop the calls and, and some of the weekends and then you take on other non-clinical work law so it's just it's, it's it's something like that lah i hope it's not too like too detailed or too sian uh, i don't know no worries to say. people who are watching this sign up for this way they, they want to hear all these actual practical stuff okay 
Yeah, so if you'd like to hear more advice, okay, please give us a thumbs up so that Dr. Cho will know how to tune it, tune and fine tune what he's going to say. Yeah, I don't know what you all want to know. Actually. <laughs> yeah, let yeah. us know in the comments so that we can we can get back to you. Uh, so we have uh, Steph Stephanie said hi. Okay, so Stephanie is uh, the wife of uh, Dr. Cho. Hi, Steph. Hi. Thanks for borrowing <laughs> your husband for, for the past hour. <laughs> yeah. She's like putting the baby to sleep. I don't know how she can be in the, in yep. the live chat. She's and, sleep already. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, continue the baby chat. And uh, oh, okay. uh, don't mention Dr. Cho is so down to earth. Yeah, yes, I perfectly agree with that. Okay, so. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, okay. thanks. This is, yeah. So, um, Dr. Cho, when I did your introduction, okay, uh, your specialty, your specialty is uh, rheumatology. Mm. Uh, so probably you can touch a little bit, uh, not too in depth, okay, but uh, in in layman terms, okay, what is rheumatology for basic uh, for? You know, I always struggle with this. Uh, every Chinese New Year, I don't know how to tell people what <laughs> rheumatology is. You know, your best time to practice. Uh, right? you specialize in rheumatology. What's that? Feng si, uh, you know, like rheumatic diseases. What? I, uh, I tell you, okay, it's a very cold specialty. I wouldn't say it's cold, but it's a very not mainstream specialty. But basically, after med school, right, you graduate, and then you, you will branch. Lah, okay, there are many branches. One is surgery. Surgery has many kinds of surgery. Okay, it can be head and neck, breast, plastic, it can be colorectal, whatever. Okay, then there's another branch, which is medicine. Lah. Medicine got family medicine, which is GP clinic polyclinic there's also uh, internal medicine which is hospital and organ specialty based so for example internal medicine will be can further branch to cardiology which is heart respiratory medicine which is lung nephrology which is renal which is kidney neurology which is brain and nerve and then there are those that are not organ specific okay they don't look at the organ lah. then for example infectious disease okay, infectious disease can be anywhere right any organ so infectious disease is one of them um, endocrinology is hormones but can be any hormonal organ okay um, you could be an oncologist which is not organ specific can be any cancer any organ okay and then there's rheumatology la, which is essentially a study of autoimmune diseases autoimmune diseases are diseases where the immune system in the body is a bit wonky and instead of protecting you which it does it attacks your own tissue la. it can attack your brain it can attack your kidney it can attack your skin and your muscle your joints and cause havoc basically and there are certain well described autoimmune or uh, immune conditions where the, the body immune system go go a bit crazy um so we are not limited to organs it can be really anywhere and um, sometimes we deal with brain issues psychotic patients sometimes we deal with water in the lungs sometimes we deal with pregnancy loss because the immune system attack the baby sometimes it deals with um kidney failure or skin rashes or muscle weakness etc so i like it because it's versatile right? it's, it's a very it's a very difficult specialty <laughs> i can tell it's a very difficult specialty <laughs> so if you ever want to do rheumatology after med school also think twice think three times think many times because uh it, it is a demanding feel right? yeah Okay, so uh, Joe mentioned that uh, probably next time when your relatives ask, okay, you can direct them <laughs> to this video. You know, this, uh, this explanation was already done. You can sleep out. I'll, I'll make sure I get my team to sneak this this portion out so that you can send it to your uh, Please watch this. <laughs> okay. Good suggestion. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we are going to move on to our highlight for today. Uh, okay, so uh, we have Joe who has previously shared about okay, how to enroll into competitive courses. So we are going to look at the other spectrum, okay? So for students who are pursuing MET, uh, MET right now, okay? Although my uh, the community that I serve, they are primarily uh, uh, the A-level community, but I, I do still want to serve some of my post-A-level community students, some of them which are in MET school. And so some of them also ask me, Mr. Teo, okay, what can I advise, what, what, what can you tell me about uh, life after MET school? Okay, so oh, okay. Uh, probably I will, I will invite the most qualified person to share. <laughs> yeah, so what are the three advice that you have, okay, for uh, hmm. uh, for current math students to help them to 
to cope or to succeed beyond i think you specifically mentioned the word not to use succeed <laughs> let's use the word yeah cope. i don't know what you mean by succeed what do you mean by succeed after med school you see everybody yeah. has a different idea of what succeed means right true yeah. so um i think uh, just like the time where you choose medicine in the first place then when you graduate you'll be a bit lost uh, because suddenly you a uh, doctor good luck and then you have to uh, function right and i feel like the the i think the first tip huh, is to always find yourself uh, okay this sounds like a motherhood statement okay i'll find yourself uh, but um you'll be surprised uh, because at this transition stage uh, at this when you're 23 to 25 to 28 years old when you graduate med school that's a very sensitive period you know, because when many things are happening you may be getting married maybe getting papa you may have kids your career is budgeting and you you it's easy to feel like you don't know which one you want to prioritize or juggle or, or, or what's more important to you and, and and how you want to because your life basically branch and inflex after that you know it's no longer like oh you just study lah because all your life you just from primary school to med school you just study right study study then pass exam, right? then pass law then okay after pass already then good luck so that's where the real thing start right and you you wonder about uh how you you want uh, mm, to do all these things uh. actually i digress it's not the open mind one but this it's this part i guess is about prioritizing what what you want uh, and um okay finding your 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 yourself and how you want to practice medicine in, in amongst this mess of things that happen during these few years of your life okay then the open mind part is really about um because uh you you are new you you uh you 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 may be exposed to many things okay you for example you may go to surgery you may go to polyclinic you may go to ong but often i find that oh a lot of uh, sometimes people are not not open to experience like they are like oh, yeah, i don't want like that like i i have a very fixed like i want to like go this or that way but you may find that actually when you're very when you're just started out a lot of experience matter okay let's say okay i'm a rheumatologist now uh, but actually all the time that I did in surgery, which is very remote from my practice now, also helps in a way that I know how surgeons think and how why they operate in a certain manner, and, and that still serves me today. So that's being about open minded. Open minded is not just about specialty; it's also about research, education, admin, IT. Because actually, your road towards all this is multiple. You can go anywhere you want. Some people go and do an MBA, you know, like a business wow. administration. After that, there's nothing stopping you from doing that, right? So, but if you're the type that, oh, I just want to like that, then uh, I want to like that, then you are limiting your options. Uh. So it, it's, it's important to be open at, at that stage uh, because actually your options are in terms of specialty training, in terms of your lifestyle, in terms of your what, whether you want to do additive things uh, uh, are multiple. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so we have uh, a live comment. Okay, so uh, Wang Sh Huang Shang, okay, he mentioned, do you feel overseas unis are different from local med unis? Yeah, so yeah, they are a little bit different. So I think the advantage of local uni is that you know the hospital system and you know the mentors and the, the people. Like you, you do have a head start in terms of choosing residency. Like, okay, I know this guy, like he's a medical student from here and what and what. And I'm more likely to choose someone that I know for a residency spot or a senior residency spot right because you have been here and i and, and to a certain extent okay i must be very careful to say this to uh <laughs> to a certain extent with some caveats our local uni med school grads are okay la. Hmm. mostly okay overseas uh, uni um the style may be a bit different the style of practice is also a little bit different the spectrum of disease is slightly different like for example if you go to uk us their diseases are uh, slightly different spectrum they have less metabolic disease okay they do have more metabolic disease i'm so sorry correction but they have uh, other diseases that are specific to them like huntington's korea and all that you know hardly see in asia and, and all that whereas we have a lot of thalassemia dengue uh, you go you will you hardly see dengue 
you wouldn't see that many lah. I suspect in the UK, right? So, yeah. but then when you start working a lot, thank you, 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 thank you. So like uh, the 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 flavor of the cases are different. The style of practice is slightly different. But having said that, these are not like a big deal lah. You can adapt and it is surmountable. Okay, and I feel that overseas grad the advantage is that you have a wider perspective. I feel that overseas grad they have more like global thinking lah. They are more open minded. <laughs> they are more versatile. Uh, and they are more like okay, like they are more adaptable lah. You know, they just okay. I I will just do it. Um, not as they both have seen more lah. I suppose at their age, and it matters. It comes true. It, can tell that there's a difference. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Mr. Huang, I hope we have gotten your answer. Okay. So, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, right now, if you have any other questions, please drop us a comment. Okay. We will. You don't need to go to a top medical school, lah. You know what the difference between top medical and normal ones? Don't know what you mean by normal ones. Maybe Yong Lulin is a normal one, but um, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Just get a degree and start work. And it's. I think. I guess in the end, it's. Okay, it matters the sense that okay, if you go to a Harvard, then wow, you Harvard, then you may get a residency spot, right? If you have a stellar CV, but people know when you start work, okay, it's not what uni you went to, it's the quality of your work, and then trust me, it comes through very quickly. The moment you open your mouth, ah, uh, within the first three lines, we know like how. How qualified what you know and what you don't know and. Because you can say the same thing in the ten different ways, right? You can say like, "Oh, yep. this this lady has a urinary tract infection," yep. or you can go in a very mangled da 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 da. Then people don't know what you're saying. So, so it, it comes through very quickly. Okay, so in the end, it's not about your degree or or, or what, but okay lah. If you're Harvard, then very impressive lah. Cambridge very impressive, yeah, for the first right. five minutes. But you still have to prove yourself. Yeah. Got it. So. Um... Mr. Huang mentioned, all right, I mean, definitely they are different, but what are your views on the so-called? Okay, yeah, I think I you just know, briefly, that, yeah. Yeah, briefly answered yeah. already. I was answering that, yeah. Uh, Advice so, for insisting on parents who, for, for those parents who keep insisting, you mean your parents? <laughs> uh, talk to me, tell them to join this video, tell them like mom and dad, come see, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding, but um, <laughs> what's G5 medical school? I haven't even heard that, what's G5? <laughs> Sorry. No um, uh, probably, uh, Mr. Hong, you can comment on uh, yeah. G5 medical schools uh, while we move on to the next tip. We will pick up your, your comment in a short while. It's really good medical schools. La. I mm. think they have your interest at heart. Law. So, you know, if you feel like going and it suits you and you want to go, then go la, and make them happy. If you don't feel like it is suited, then I suppose you have a conversation with them. Law. Hmm. It sounds right. like they don't want you to go Yong Lulin, you want to go to Harvard or some Cambridge. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right. So we'll move on to the second tip. So before we move on, okay, so uh questions, please uh please be like Mr. Huang, uh Huang, uh, Huang Chang, please type it out. Uh so uh Dr. Cho can take. Okay, if not, okay, if you're watching this, you like what we do, please root for us, give us a thumbs up on the video. So uh, Dr. Cho, what do you have for us as a second tip? Uh, be thick skin, very thick skin. Okay, sorry, I'm <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry. I think we can relate yeah. this. Uh, be thick skin to find a mentor, <laughs> yeah, partly, 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 partly. Find a mentor. Okay, find yeah. a mentor is a very obvious advice. Okay, but the mentor needs to like you. La. Okay, you need to have if you uh, yeah, yeah, find a mentor. Okay, okay, that's a tip. But that also, I, I actually, I don't know why I'm going like. Just now, I think I, I didn't. Yeah, prepare, yeah, right. Basically, you have to be thick skin. Okay, I can thick skin, it, yeah. I can change it to thick skin. <laughs> because right, so uh, can you on, on thick skin. Uh, medicine is a thankless job, la. Okay, you can do one million things, right? You just need to screw up once, once, and you'll get it. Okay, it is not a job that will like ah, good job. You know, you did so many good things. Huh? Let's clap for you, and then uh. But you cause a GI bleed or you cause this complication. Sorry, uh, is you can do one thousand thing right, one thing wrong, and it's very bad. So sometimes it's a bit, uh, in a way, it's a bit, but uh, uh, 
lopsided. That's how people get burnt out. Okay, so it's important to be resistant. I always tell HOs and MOs that you the best quality you can have sometimes is to be have a thick skin. Uh. If you are like very glass, uh, or sorry to say, uh, uh, vulnerable to feedback, or, or then it's very difficult, right? Like you, you, you take it upon yourself, like hey, I'm not good, or like you take it very personally. But it doesn't need to be personal. Sometimes it's just uh, life, you know. And you just start out in the career. Of course, there will be hiccups. Of course, there are things that you don't do well. But take it in your stride and just move on and uh, and and learn from it, lah. Okay, don't get too injured and too like. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I think good, do good enough. You may find that this is very obvious, but it is not true, okay? Because by quality, the people, the medical students who enter med school, the people who choose medicine are very alpha, right? They're very like, oh, I did have four A's and like, ah, oh, I'm so celebrated. I've succeeded my whole life and that's why I'm in medicine now. Then suddenly they start work like, yeah, why you cannot do this? Uh? Then you get scolded every day. Like, hey, why you, why your quality, hey, you cannot take blood properly, uh? like, you know blood culture, then they crumble, right? Because their whole life they have succeeded. They've done well and they have only A's and excellence to, to prove. Then suddenly it's always the opposite. So it is important that um, when exams, that's why I say when exams end, real life starts, right? It is important to also be, uh, allow yourself to be vulnerable, allow yourself to, 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 take all this and, and don't take it personally and uh, just move on and you'll be fine. Yeah. All right. So uh, to quickly sum up, okay, Dr. Cho mentioned that uh, to, <laughs> to quickly move on, right? Okay. And don't yeah. take it because it's all about the job, not about the person. Great. Um, so uh, I think the, I think uh, Mr. Huang got back. Okay. So he's measured. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. I, yeah, what's my advice about parents who keep insisting why are they insisting so you tell ask them why are they insisting la. you have to have to converse you have to have a conversation with your parents la. okay then I, I think that this is a red flag huh okay it's a red flag for you because uh is you need to ask yourself in medicine really what you want first place then ask why why must you if medicine is really what you want then does the location really matter that much and why must it be one of these things is it prestige that you want then if it's not prestige that you want, then why must it be this? Okay. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, this, uh, this YouTube or this viewer got his answer. So need to show your video to a lot of parents. So yes, okay, if you really like what we do, okay, please share this video. Okay, this is the most practical uh, means to- you can uh, share one now. <laughs> yeah, 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 on YouTube. Uh, you can I know whether I got say wrong things. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll move on to the last thing before we wrap it up. So we are going to wrap up really soon. So if you have any questions, okay, any more questions- What's the last tip? Uh, you want me to flash? <laughs> oh, can't okay. remember what's the last tip. Yeah. Okay, your last tip that you focus, tell me. Focus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Focus. Don't be distracted. Yeah. So okay, I think yeah, because. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because as I say, you have you have a lot of different life events, right? After you, you exit med school and people take up research, people take up admin, people take up like um, all sorts of things and they want to be nowadays particularly residency sports are very competitive, right? So you want to do research and you want to show that, wow, I have a stellar CV, you know, look, I did this many audits, I did so many studies on clinical medicine, and I write so many papers and publish so much. But really at the end of the day, huh, it is important to be clear that you are a clinician and then the patients come first because you can publish a lot of papers, you could have done a lot of admin, you could have done so many things, but if you are not functional, then all that does not matter, okay? Um, you could have won many grants, even at a more senior level, like let's say you're a consultant, you have won many grants, you're like a professor, ex in dean of school of medicine or whatever, but if you're sued by the family or a patient, then that's the end of the career, okay? It doesn't matter how many grants you have and wow. you defend yourself, right? In, 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 the code of uh, all that. So really it's easy to be distracted, okay? You may think that medicine or see patients la, and be, it's not true la, because there are many things that will distract you when you start work. And um, in the end of the day, you have to be clear that, okay, number one priority is still 
bedside and get the patient sorted out and then do the rest later. Yeah. All right. So um, thank you for sharing about being focused. So just now you actually mentioned about getting sued. Uh, so oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, it caught it caught me. So it seems to me like uh, there is very little scope for error. Okay, when you are an actual practitioner. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I should share more like. Yeah. what you should consider to be the downsides of medicine before you apply for medicine so one is that you're exposed to you're actually exposed to danger okay in terms of like you will get exposed to tuberculosis hiv and covid 19 in your face not remotely through another channel when i was in senior residency i i thought i wanted to do infectious disease huh? but stephanie is like you know this right <laughs> I did a lumbar puncture on a patient that got needle stick from HIV patient. Okay, like I got a needle stick, like it went through into my finger. And because it's a HIV patient, I need to take HIV medicines for like three months and make sure that I don't have HIV after after that. I did a lot of blood tests and all that. And it was a major reportable thing, right? Oh, my resident got a needle stick injury from HIV patient. So um and then you you do get patients who like have tuberculosis then you didn't know people didn't know that they don't know you're tuberculosis then they cough 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 in your face and then you don't know whether you got right so um and then of course COVID-19 don't need to say like you know or SARS or whatever so these are dangers these are actual actual practical dangers and the problem is not just your danger it's the people around you also right because if you get then I mean it's not just you your family might 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 be in jeopardy yeah so um it's it's you can think of it as very heroic and very like whatever but when you're inside it's not so funny like it's not so like glam anymore okay it's it's real the dangers are real secondly um, it's also not true that job security is absolute because you in this age it's more litigious and people do sue and uh, if you do make a mistake you can get into trouble um, it is um, increasing in singapore in, in in the landscape that's why there are more and more medical lawyers right so um I would say that uh, because of that, people also become more defensive. Like uh, you, you just be careful, lah. Like oh, I all the ten scan, I pet scan everybody. You scan, scan, scan. Ah, okay. See, I scan. You know, but you also cannot do that, right? So you have to find a balance and where your conscience is, and yet not be too risky, put yourself at risk. So these are very uh, actual things, lah. And. Lastly, it can be very tiring. La. I mean, it can be, it's actually a very bone, break, bone breaking, like tiring and terrible thing, especially if you are seeing patients back to back, back to back, back to back, back to back. And sometimes they are very complicated, right? So they have 10 million and one things. And sometimes one organ can be very complicated, right? So the patient's liver is very complicated. Like the liver, like from five years ago, they got clot, then after they got tumor, then after that, this, that, this, that, this, that. Just the liver, huh? Then after they got the kidney, got heart, got brain. Then one patient, you can round the organ like, wow, it's like that's only one patient. Then you have 30 patients, they got so like what 100 plus organs, right? So you it is very uh can be overwhelming, like it is uh easy to burn up and easy to get disillusion and ask yourself like what the hell you're doing, and, and, and uh, especially if your peers are, are harsh or the environment is not uh, nurturing or, or um all that adds to the stress yeah so, so think you, twice yeah that's why you mentioned about being this illusion so yeah. uh and you mentioned there are several uh risks or hazards that you face uh on a daily basis mm -hmm. so i'm just curious are all these uh laid up front to you uh before you, you sign mm -hmm. up sign on a medical career or you have to go through people this assume you know yeah people assume you know when you apply for med school that you are you know what you are getting yourself into right but the truth is i find that people often don't know what they're getting themselves into yeah they just see the wow i'm going to be a doctor and... <sighs> yeah. okay so we are coming to an end okay uh <laughs> thanks for sharing about being focused and i hope i didn't the... disillusion people though it's still a very nice career it's still a very meaningful career okay despite all this yeah you do act, make actual differences to people's lives so and it is mentally stimulating and uh, 
a meaningful and very versatile career. Like, you know, you, as I said, you could branch out into many different things. You can do education, you can do research, you can be a teacher, you can go to a lab and cut rats if you want. You can become a lawyer, you can do an MBA, you can do many things. And, um, and you, you are offered the, the, a position where you, you can make an actual difference. Uh. So all that do do uh, are still important and meaningful things, but it's just uh, that shouldn't, uh, as in, you also cannot have a too rosy uh, picture when you, when you come in. Uh. Got it. So uh, we have a uh, comment. Uh, our our common friend, uh, Malcolm. Uh. <laughs> Hi, Malcolm. Hello. 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 Hey, thanks for watching. So, uh, 你好, 你好, 你好. <laughs> So, uh, uh, Shijun's question. Uh, and by the way, okay. Uh, Shijun is one of our our. We are we are all from the same CCA lah. Mm. We were in secondary school. So, uh, Saint John. Same you know batch. Why? <laughs> yeah. Is it same batch or what? What? I believe he's one batch younger, right? Or two batch younger? No, no, no. Yeah, it's our batch. Eh? Oh, should be our batch. Uh. or one batch. Uh. Yeah, anyway, yeah, similar, uh, similar. Anyways, yeah. anyways, Anyways, okay, age doesn't matter. We all still look young. Yes, now, okay. Technology. How technology affect the medical treatment? And well, sounds like a med school interview question. <laughs> but, uh, uh, good and bad. Lah. So you, um, the advancement definitely do help patients. So, okay, my favorite is rheumatology. It used to be a very helpless disease. Okay, people's hands just become deformed because there's no treatment last time, 30 years ago. But now there are like so many different treatments you could have A to Z options uh, and they are very potent and useful and minimal side effects. So that has revolutionized my field and definitely that's part of what technology can do. mRNA vaccine in COVID-19 is a technology, right? I mean, if without the vaccine, we are still like, don't know what lockdown, I still don't know when, until cows come home, still lockdown. But now there's an mRNA vaccine and it's very responsive. There are mutants just coming out of a new mRNA vaccine. So technology makes a huge difference uh, in patient's care and um, they have increased patient's lifespans, improved their quality of life. But technology also makes us uh, complicated. Technology can be very complicated. Practicing 10 years ago or 20 years ago, you don't need to think about, wow, I got 10 options, right? 10 different treatments. Uh. You just think about three, la, the three textbook. Or uh, don't know such thing as a PET scan. Uh. Just do a normal CT scan or X-ray. Very good already. So in med school, you just learn X-ray, right? Now you got X-ray, you got MRI, you got CT scan, you got PET scan, you got ultrasound, you got DEXA scan, you got bone scan. Many modalities. So it complicates matters, lah. Like, and it acts to your mind, <laughs> fault, right? Like wow, like so many things to juggle and think about, and um, it's almost to the extent that we need AI now you know, to, to manage the complexity. So good and bad. It works both ways. I hope Sujin has got your answer. Uh, yes, uh, Sujin has commented that we all have defined age and look younger. <laughs> so thanks, thanks. I think Dr. Cho looks the youngest among all three of us. Nah, I got wrinkles here, you never see. <laughs> Okay, so uh, pro probably we, uh, we will wrap with a case study. So what do we mean by a case study? So Dr. Cho, in your years of practicing, maybe you share with us one of the most memorable case that you have experienced. Wow, you uh, never, your last minute planned this. <laughs> uh, when, when, when we have uh, when we have a rare guest, okay, these are the questions that uh, I suddenly have inspired to ask. A case study, a quick one, a quick one. We don't need, we don't need to, we don't need to be very uh, in-depth, but something case someone study, that, uh, yeah or, or rather mm. some uh, a case that you have helped that is the most memorable to you personally okay, la, i mean they this kind of thing ch changes with with time you know like yeah. so i can just say the most recent one okay we were i was on service recently so we had a very complicated complex uh, patient 50 plus and um, cannot say too much because ppa so anyway yep yep it's autoimmune disease la, and very multiple organ kind of complications and she was on a very bad trajectory so the last one year multiple admissions in out in out in our hospital and couldn't really reverse what was happening so we treat one part then the other part crash la. but she's fairly young right she's 50 something it's not that it's reversible so a lot of times we have bounced back and forth trying our best to 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 jaga this right so uh, she has a problem with 
sticky blood. So she she needed some uh, and the sticky blood actually caused kidney failure and all that. And uh, we 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 thin the blood lah. Okay, basically with medicines. Then after she bled because the blood was thin. So and then we tried to reverse that. And then she has other issues like lung infection and so on. So we had to after one whole year of in out in out in out. Even though she was fifty plus, she was more or less bed bound and, and all that and you can see the, the effects of all this getting her like we're not really getting anywhere like going on in circles like trying to manage her but not really breaking through right so and that's where we had to like basically tell her that mm, it's ask her like what what your objectives are you know we really are at almost a dead end and, and um if you deteriorate, maybe perhaps it's not the best idea that we are so aggressive. Like we still want to scope, uh, scan, uh, surgery, uh, pump in things, uh, and because all this exact cost to her, so yeah. not monetary cost, physical cost, mental cost, emotional cost. But she was not ready to let go either, you know, she was like, but medically we had to make the decision that uh, we cannot go on like that. So we, we basically told her cannot really put in the uh, stop here and but we still pursue the routine treatment, like general things like oxygen, antibiotics, and so on. We still, we just the very life sustaining treatments. We said no. La. And we had to have a family conference with the, with the family and told them the same thing. She, she expired quite quickly after that, you know, despite all the usual measures uh, that we normally would take. So it's hard to, 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 um, to, to draw that full stop. La yeah you know? wow and um it's 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 a it's a call that sometimes has to be made right in 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 the overall interest of things and um it's difficult to communicate that so some of these things are are, are, are heavy la. wow didn't expect a memorable case to be that memorable i think this case study will stick mm. with me uh for the longest time Okay, so uh, thanks, Dr. Cho, okay, for sharing us that, you know, medicine involves making choices and uh, hard choices sometimes. So for the viewers out there, okay, I hope you have found value in what you have heard from Dr. Cho. Okay, so um, yes, we are coming to an end. So um, if you have any other questions, okay, please drop us a comment. Okay, if Dr. Cho ever sees the footage, <laughs> he, can, he can reply that. Okay, if not... Okay, um, yes, okay, we will be coming, we will have come to the end to the, to the series of support of Ace Your Icons. Once again, if you like our series, please like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive latest updates on upcoming interviews. So, thank you very much, and I will see you all next week yeah, thank again. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Yeah.